We are today here at Guest at Philips and we're looking at how a big uh, medical company incorporates innovation from outside, from inside, and basically also spins it out to the rest of the world. And I'm talking here with Eric Meyer, you're the CFO of Philips. And um, first question, why does a, f a CFO of a company get involved in innovation? You basically gave a passionate plea about how important innovation was and how Philips did it. But is that the role of a CFO? Your, isn't your role just to make sure that the amount uh, of money is counted the right way? Well, you can look at it that way, but uh, I see uh, the role of the CFO and uh, our roles as executives in, uh, in innovative companies like, uh, like Philips in a way that uh, brings growth and innovation into the company mm -hmm. uh, and uh, spins it off, as you mentioned. So through yeah. that, I was able to uh, be on the ina inauguration team of our incubator, Sanara Ventures, mm -hmm. about eight years ago. Uh, this uh, incubator uh, has uh, already uh, includes about 18 startups. Uh, some of them managed to raise funds on their own and are successful. Uh, we've also, uh, I was partnering and, uh, uh, you know, inaugurating uh, a venture capital mm -hmm. uh, for, for Philips and other partners mm -hmm. uh, just about a year ago. And we're starting to make investments. We raised 50 million euros already, part of it from Philips, part of it from externals. And mm -hmm. we're going to get to 100 million euros yeah. And we're going to continue and make investments there in innovation uh, uh, that uh, we are focused on healthcare. Yeah. And then, of course, also, you bought a bunch of companies, right? You bought a lot of these innovation companies which grow, and at a certain point, they're big enough for Philips to take and to, uh, to, to sell all their products all over the whole world. Right. Um, so that's the role of the CFO. You have to acquire, you have to build these funds. Um, you basically, as Philips, you went from 400 people to 1,600 people and from uh, one company to 27 companies uh, from Israel. What is the role of, um, of Israel, Israeli innovation into the Philips uh, into the whole Philips ecosystem how much innovation comes from Israel and basically goes around the world with Philips well definitely Philips is a large company it's a multinational operates in over a hundred yeah. countries around the world uh, the let's say the, C the CEO and uh, chairman and CEO Franz van Outen has uh, been here in Israel uh, quite a few times and from the very beginning has identified the let's say the potential of tapping into innovation in different ways that we did before. Mm -hmm. um, tapping into innovation does not mean that you just need to develop it all in-house. Mm -hmm. uh, other ways could be um, uh, acquiring companies all together yeah. and integrating them. Other ways could be incubating them. Uh, we can collaborate with them. We do all that. Yeah. So, but my question is now, after 20 years of working in Israel, how much of these innovations which have been started in Israel, acquired by you, created by you, okay. are now finding their way all around Philips worldwide and are being sold worldwide? Sure. So, multiple of them. You're going to see, for example, EPD, which is in the electrophysiology space. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's what a unique. Uh, they what they do is they treat. Um, pace irregularity, cardio pace irregularities that are the number one cause of stroke. Um, this is the technology that Philips is relying on in the uh, image guided therapy electrophysiology space. Mm -hmm. So that technology is now exported everywhere. everywhere. Uh, same goes also with um, with informatics. So the entire informatics business of business was uh, was established here on acquisition. And what is informatics? Informatics. Well, we in, in healthcare you generate a lot of information. Yes. And the problem is that uh, you know clinicians have only limited amount of time to uh, draw a conclusion based on all the information. Yeah. You got to create tools and uh, software as an application to help the clinician mm -hmm. to come to a conclusion. Yeah, quick and nice uh, integrated exactly. uh, data and to make dashboards and make a good view, visualization, and that started here in Israel. Exactly, through uh, both organic development mm -hmm. and also acquisitions that we made. We made numerous of them, like the CareStream acquisition uh, that was done just a few years, uh, three years ago, and has become, let's say, the, uh, the uh, PACS, the, picture archiving system and application of Philips globally. Which we're going to see also here as a demo of, yeah. As well, definitely. Okay. Now, if you look, there are more, uh, much more. There are technologies that were developed here organically, mm -hmm. like the CT, the advanced CT, cardio CT, uh, spectral 
uh, CT that is developed here in the building mm -hmm. and uh, uh, for the last uh, 30 years and Philips acquired this company about 20 years ago mm -hmm. and this has become the CT technology for the entire Philips that is then sold in all uh, 100 plus countries. Yeah, yeah. What's the sales of uh, Philips in, uh, in Israel? They're about uh, 2 billion. Is in NIS, which yeah. is about 600 million uh, euros. Oh, yeah. 600 million. But I mean, the technology is all over the world and is exported, so it's the influence is much bigger. Yes. Is it a lot of it is nowadays software, right? Software development, I think it's 18% of the export of, uh, of Israel. And is it also a, a big part of Philips uh, here in Israel? It is. So if you look at overall our presence here in Israel, about 1,600 people, mm -hmm. about half of them are doing software and, and applications from different sorts and kinds. Mm -hmm. And the other part is doing, let's say, more of the hardware. The, 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 uh, it's yeah. manufacturing and development of hardware of, yeah. let's say, of mostly it is CT yeah. and m nuclear medicine. Yeah. Now, why uh, you, you said it was really important that you work together with the government, they promote it, they basically give money, they give support. Yes. But, I mean, you're a big company, you have money enough, you have easy access to capital. Why is the, uh, the support of the Israeli government important? What role do they play, which you say that's unique and we couldn't do that without them? Well, first, uh, now my CFO uh, hat is on. Uh, if there's money on the table, you got to take it. As a, as a company that uh, works for the shareholders, that's what we want to do. We want to make sure we maximize. Now, nowadays, the you say we work for all the stakeholders. We work for society, the people, not only for the share. But anyway, okay, yeah. That's, uh, you don't leave money on the table if, yeah. if it's available. Of course. Yeah. That's one thing. Yeah. And uh, there are, uh, um, the government comes in in situations where you would not normally invest make the investments because it's too risky because it's not mature yet take for example uh, the incubator that we have Sonara Ventures they invest or they incubate companies that companies like Philips See. would not incubate or would not invest in them already mm -hmm. because they're too early stage yeah. large multinationals do not know how to digest companies at that very yeah. early stage yeah. so you got to so what we've done we've taken let's say a spin off and we've said okay let's grow technologies from early stage in that incubator until some of them grow up yeah. and when they're mature enough we'll be able either to buy them or to integrate their technology or uh, or collaborate in a certain shape or form yeah. uh, but with very low investments because mm -hmm. the government has been paying about two-thirds of it yeah which is very low well, which is interesting they do two-thirds but it's a loan and if the company is successful the loan is being paid back right it's not a grant right. it's only a grant when they fail and so in, exactly. in net in net cost for the government is not that much well, um, I got to tell you, in the startup scene, you got to fail a lot in order to succeed. Uh -huh. And that's risk taking. Mm -hmm. That's what I refer to in, in the DNA. You got to be ready to kill a few, let's say, less successful companies sure. in order to allow the more successful ones. And to basically take extra risk, you need the government. Exactly, because otherwise we would not be in that scene and all that startup scene would not happen. Did already anything come out of this uh, incubator? I mean, this incubator is now how many years old? It's five it's years uh, old? It's actually getting into its eighth year. Eighth year. And did there already one company spin out uh, which became successful or was acquired by Philips? Uh, so there is, let's say, our most successful company is called TaylorMed. Uh, which has uh, raised funds since and grown dramatically, has bought their competitor. They're mostly focused on the U.S. market, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they're doing great. And we have a few other good potentials afterwards. How big are they now in terms of uh, sales and money? Uh, well, I, nothing that I can disclose right now because okay. they're a private company. Oh, okay. uh, but, uh, but definitely they're raising... How many people work there? <laughs> Uh, well, over 100. Yeah. Okay. Over so that's the exact. But you didn't acquire that. You, you, they are on their own, and they're basically we growing nicely in America. We've made, uh, we've taken stakes there. Yeah. Okay. So we have part of their capital, yeah. and uh, that's what uh, that's the position we'd like to be. Because yeah. you can, of course, buy 100 percent of a company. Sure. Or you can. And you can destroy it easily if it's too early. But I mean, right. also, you ha you started this eight years ago, and now you have one company which you didn't. So you have to wait pretty long for a return on that investment, on that energy you put into it. Well, enough that uh, 
two or three companies are sold for, I don't know, uh, you know. hundreds of million euros each mm -hmm. uh, to, let's say, re return a few thousand percents on their investments. Okay. So you're uh, very happy with that. Okay. okay. Um, if you look at, uh, if you look at uh, the, your, your uh, company, which has the headquarters in the Netherlands, yes. is there a lot of corporations with the Netherlands? Uh, or, uh, I mean, I don't see many Dutch people uh, working here. Uh, so uh, what's the cooperation between Israel and, and the Dutch uh, research and development, which they also have in the Netherlands? So quite a lot of uh, uh, corporations. So a lot of the advanced research is mm -hmm. done in the Netherlands in Philips research. Mm -hmm. uh, Philips has a, a, let's say, a very significant research center mm -hmm. uh, that is done out of, uh, uh, out of uh, Eindhoven, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are getting a lot of the advanced research from there. So mm -hmm. let's say the deep know-how, in many cases, will come from the Netherlands. A lot of support. We get delegations of uh, Dutch uh, businessmen and uh, business people and uh, uh, also research institutions that want to collaborate and we do collaborate yeah okay um, what are the big challenges for Philips of course there's a lot of things about quality nowadays that's a little dump on the on the hump on the road but what do you think for the next five years are the big uh, challenges for Philips which you have to uh, accomplish or uh, innovate or buy or or uh, make successful well, we can see now we're getting into a challenging, uh, let's say, a more challenging environment for the entire economy, mm -hmm. uh, let alone also for the uh, technology companies. So I think that funding is going to be, let's say, globally, is mm -hmm. going to be uh, uh, less available. Uh, but in these times exactly, you can uh, rely on the sources of, uh, of funding for innovation, like governments, like research in institutions, these types of funding will always be available in Israel. Mm -hmm. They do not uh, okay. rely at all on, uh, on times of, uh, let's say, prosperity or times of uh, uh, more crisis like we see today in the global markets. Mm -hmm. They are completely independent of that, which allows you to continue and innovate. Okay. Last question. Um, you uh, acquire you know, big companies, make them successful, hundreds of people, hundreds of millions of euros. How successful is the rate of integrating, uh, say, grown-ups into uh, the Philips ecosystem? I mean, a lot of times people get frustrated, thinks uh, there's the bureaucracy of a big, uh, of a big organization. Right. How successful are you to spin in, uh, buy, and you know, these kinds of innovations? Well... As I always say, buying companies is easy, integrating them is hard. Yes. Um, and, yeah. and we know that uh, each company, uh, you know, the main thing you, you got to do when you integrate a company, and we've integrated like, uh, I don't know, like five or six of them, of them here in Israel that uh, Philips has acquired. Uh, each one of them is a different story. You cannot, it's not one size fits all. Mm -hmm. So you cannot use the same methodology to integrate all companies. Some companies you want to, uh, let's say, let, let them do the thing for about three, four years and then start slowly integrating. Some of them you want to integrate up front. It, it takes, uh, let's say, you got to understand their management team, if it's mature enough in order to grow, if they're willing to change. Uh, you got to see their technology. If their technology, uh, um, if we have something to help them or we're just going to do damage if we start integrating. Yeah. So you got to evaluate and assess that very early, uh, even even before uh, acquire. you acquire the company and then come together with a strategy of how to integrate. We've made some mistakes, of course, uh, but I think that uh, some of the acquisitions that we've made have been successful. Like which one is the most successful? Uh, well, we've done uh, the EPD one that you're going to see today, uh, which had a rough time at the beginning, uh, but uh, we have helped them a lot through management change and uh, through uh, investing in their uh, uh, in their uh, patient safety and into their quality level. Uh -huh. uh, and we can see today the traction that uh, this product is uh, is enjoying. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it. And Thank thanks you. for having us. Thank you so much.